Thank you for having me. I'm Ian Bigelow, I'm the Cataloging Coordinator for the University of Alberta Libraries, and I'm presenting here uh, for myself, Sharon Farnell, our Metadata Coordinator, and Danush Davudi, one of our Metadata Specialists in Bibliographic Services. So, bib frame, bib frame, bib frame. Will you be my bib frame forever? Um, the University of Alberta Libraries has been actively at least trying to ramp up for linked data for some time. And one of the aspects of that has been assessing uh, BibFrame with intent to implement something sometime. Um, how, so we've really been trying to ask a few really broad questions. How well does BibFrame transition our data? Uh, which flavor of BibFrame will serve us best? How much should be invested in mark enrichment and development, given this? Uh, how can we make BibFrame data discoverable? And what could workflow look like for a BibFrame pilot or implementation? Um, so, enter today's conversation, comparing, comparing the uh, BibFrame conversion via the Castellini Share VDE, Virtual Discovery Environment Program, and the BibFrame Library of Congress Converter. And while we don't want to make things too competitive, we do have a few horse races running with this comparison. Uh, one being the two conversion methods, also in-house versus vendor-supported uh, processes, um, and also MARC versus post-MARC to link data conversion, uh, URI enrichment efficacy. So, um, the, the BibFrame 2.0 uh, converter from the Library of Congress is in XSLT, it was originally released back in March 2017. It's available on GitHub for download. And so it's essentially a straightforward XSLT, at least the version that we used. Um, this is it, just as used in Oxygen XML Editor. So it really is, take Mark XML, process it through the XSLT, and BibFrame 2.0, um, XML RDF is output. And we wanted to take that and do a little bit of further experimentation to see how we can automate that process, uh, work with uh, enrichment post-process and such. And so essentially we've been automating using the use of PyMark and OpenRefine to convert and enrich our data, uh, really trying to transform and enrich at the collection level. And we've got a collection of about I don't know, five and a half million uh, titles, uh, maybe seven and a half million volumes. So. A lot of data to process through. Um, and once in place, along with the Castellini data, we'll have two versions of, of our collection in BibFrame 2.0. So, so lots of data to look at and, and play around with, lots of experimentation. More importantly though, we want to come up with a process where uh, we can keep that data up to date. So for the, excuse me, for the in-house process, uh, all names were extracted from BibFrame files using um, style sheet into a TSV file. Uh, name types were extracted to determine the proper search API for better results. Uh, Example.org URIs from RDF about were extracted to be used as key when adjusting the rich name back from the, into the bib frame file. Then the TSV files from the previous step were uploaded into OpenRefine and after some, some cleanup, generally speaking, um, reconciliation work was, was done against uh, LC name authorities, VIAF and LCSH. We plan to look at some others at a future date, but this is what we started with. And this slide just represents some processing times. Uh, it's, this is for a, a file set of 10,000 records, I believe, which, you know, not insignificant in times, but sort of manageable. And um, it's worth noting that some of this does take some computation power or a little bit of time to work through. So when you're looking at large collections to, to work with, we've been making use of both our, our local systems but also Compute Canada uh, for, for cloud-based computing. And so as files were, were separated into segments, processes were done in parallel with the local machine doing, uh, working on ingesting and rich DRIs into the bib frame. And, uh, the cloud instance would work on, say, enriching names and subjects with URIs at the same time. Uh, it's also worth noting that we're working on, on a script to automate this process because for a collection of our size, we don't want to have to do that 600 times. And we also want to keep, be able to keep the data up to date once we go through the full set. 
So entity matching with the open or find process. So these are just some of the numbers we had from imprint files in our sort of general collection thus far. Um, a few areas of caution worth noting. One, essentially due to some data errors within the MARC data, uh, we did have some files that were kicked back by the process, so we'll have to do some follow-up work with, with those. Uh, also, uh, we had a pretty good success rate with matching, given thinking about the number of uh, entities that probably don't have authorities anyway, had a pretty good success rate. But we want to do a little bit more analysis to make sure we're not getting too many false hits, you know, sort of, and we can adjust our thresholds accordingly. So changing gears and looking at the Castellini project. So it's an, at Colt and Castellini Libri partnership. Uh, originally, Aliada, the Aliada project, co-financed by the European Union in 2013 to 2015, uh, applied linked data paradigm using Ferber OO-based technologies, and essentially the, the share VDE project sort of picked up from that. It's a prototype virtual discovery environment with a three bit frame layer architecture, person work, instance and item, and a uh, conversion process taking Mark 21 to RDF. So you can see the, the project participants there on the left, uh, including the Library of Congress and uh, a range of very large research libraries within the United States and Canada, which you know, combined to make for a very substantial data set. Uh, that's being processed. With phase one of the project, Mark for 1985 and 2015 imprints, so anything published in those years, uh, was returned with URIs enriched in Mark, Mark format. Uh, that data was also returned back in VibFrame 2.0. Uh, through the processes, they worked on entity identification, reconciliation, and data clustering. They released the share virtual discovery environment tool with searchable imprint data and access to that data through BlazeGraph. Uh, with phase two was the creation of a relationship database to support entity identification, improvements to the process in general. The base file of the participating libraries was returned uh, or slotted to be returned, this is still ongoing, in BibFrame 2.0. And the marked data is also to be returned in, with, with enrichments and uh, URIs added. And another further deliverable was web discoverability through application of other ontologies such as schema.org. So this is the general process uh, for the Share VDE project, and it can be broken into two, I guess, main areas. The first one being the, the Authify process. It's worth noting that they, they start with the MARC data for, for a lot of their work with clustering, uh, entity detection and enrichment, and uh, a tool called Relator Term Detection, where they essentially use text mining to add Relator terms to a range of different pieces of data. Um, that enriched mark output is then taken through their Lotify process where the mark is converted into BibFrame 2.0. And this is just a sample of their share VDE platform, uh, just showing good old William Shakespeare. And you'll so see that there's a few differences to, you know, sort of the, the standard displays that you might, might note. There's the other forms along the right there. Uh, we've got links to Wikidata, LC, BNF, and VF, with some information from Wikipedia. Uh, down below the screen, which you can't see, the works will be broken out. And they've even managed to, to take it and, and link it directly into a blacklight discovery layer, so you can go down to the, uh, right down to the holdings level. So there is a phase three to this project slotted, and back in October, there was a meeting at the Library of Congress to discuss some use cases for that. And while some of that's still being sort of worked out, in general the idea is to publish all the participants' data into that share virtual discovery environment platform, incorporate the ability to batch update the record sets with library exports, um, to be able to have enhanced data back to libraries in an automated way, uh, the ability to edit the information in share VDE through cataloging tools, have different reports, and develop original cataloging workflows. So the, the general timeline for this is three years, which is very ambitious. Uh, and in general, it's, it's looking much less like an exploratory project and, and really big frame uh, implementation on large scale, which is very interesting, if it gets off the ground. <laughs> and so with some of this in mind, we really wanted to have a way to start analyzing some of this. Um, 
and sort of see how data transformed through these processes. Now, I only have a little bit of time, so we needed to try to focus on a few different examples to highlight some of the, some of the analysis that we've done and some of the differences between the two conversion tools. Uh, so one good example is looking at production, publication, distribu distribution, manufacture statements. The LCXSLT program strips, brackets, and other marks of punctuation for place, agent, and date. This is, you can think of that as you will. It's perhaps more interesting for older data before RDA where you know, those brackets meant a lot more. Um, but in contrast, the share VDE uh, transformation still keeps that punctuation in the different brackets. But also they, they meant URI, URI structure to cluster the, the data together. Excuse me. Which, which you see is, becomes something of a, a common approach that they take with different things. And similarly with preferred title, whereas the LCXSLT makes use of the appropriate mark fields to generate preferred title for work information into, into BibFrame. The share VDE, they, again, they, they meant a URI structure for work titles and instance titles to cluster information related to each. For creators, contributors, and relators, Again, LCXSLT makes use of agents and roles. Uh, share VDE, you'll see here they've got that agent 78151. They've minted their own URI for that particular agent, uh, which then they point to the BibFrame agent and a range of other associated pieces of information. Another very interesting piece of point of comparison um, with the LCXSLT, earlier records lacking relationship designators, so a lot of the stuff pre-RDA, um, they assigned the contributor role to, to a lot of those just through the automated process of conversion. Uh, this is logical, I'm not complaining. Um, but through share VDE, they have this relator term detection where they use text analysis to sort of associate roles from other mark fields. And uh, this is just an example below where from our data, there was no relationship designator assigned, but they've managed to pull that from the, the mark data and assign the, the creator term to it. Very interesting. So one of the other examinations was looking at URI enrichment both before and after. So we've recently had some very interesting guidance on uh, the use of URI and mark data from the PCC task group on URI and mark. Um, Back at the, the most recent MAC meeting at ALA Annual, three new proposals were passed. Uh, one for the provision of the use of subfield zero and subfield one in MARC data, with subfield zero for your eyes that identify a record or authority entity describing that thing. <clears throat> subfield one for your eyes that directly identify the thing itself, so real world objects. A separate proposal redefined subfield four, defining it to encompass URIs for relationships in the MARC data. And we've got a brand new 758 field in the MARC data uh, for identifier for resources relating to the resource described in the bibliographic record. So primary resource identifiers. Think of OCLC works, for instance. OCLC work identifiers, URIs. Just one example, but. So how did, how did this data fare through the conversion processes? Well, from Pre-enriched MARC data that we worked with, you can see this is just an example. Uh, but id.lock.gov information seemed to be um, brought over through the conversion quite well. Same with VIAF, uh, it worked just fine. What we did find interesting is that, you know, using MARC edit, for instance, to enrich the MARC data beforehand, you can add a lot of the URI for different RDA vocabularies, but much of these from controlled vocabularies are brought over through conversion anyway, begging the question, you know, why do it? You want it in your MARC data? Maybe. <laughs> um, also interesting that the, uh, the LC conversion tool doesn't make use of the new subfield one or 758 yet, but I'm sure that'll come. From bib frame to uh, enriched post conversion, things seem to work quite well also. Uh, again, just an example. Um, now, both Castellini has made a few good cases, perhaps, for getting context uh, by looking at the MARC data for further enrichment, by having the URIs 
sort of generated within the MARC data. And there's perhaps a few other arguments there, but certainly there's a use case here that it works quite well doing it post-conversion. Again, you may want to ask yourself about what you want to get out of putting your eyes in MARC if you want to do so. Uh, Mark from the Castellini uh, gets a little bit more speculative because, well, we haven't gotten their data back yet. <laughs> but um, they have provided some examples, and they've also been working very closely with the PCC task group on URI and Mark. So there's just a, a few examples here, and for the, the deliverable to have our full collection returned uh, in Mark format with the URIs added to it, they've, um, we're currently they're working through the modeling that they intend to provide those subfield ones, 758s, and the other information from the, the new PCC proposals that just recently cleared, which is quite helpful. Yeah. Uh, URI and the Castellini uh, BibFrame2 data is rather interesting as well. Again, they're making use of these, their own minted URIs to cluster information, but you'll also note here that they're sort of modeling other relationships within the data itself. You see the use of the AL same as to pull together some of the, the different uh, identifiers. So all this makes us think about workflows a little bit more as well. So transitioning to linked data was never going to be easy. There's several reasons for this. Merck has been around for a very long time. We have lots of it. ILS and discovery systems we use are built around Merck. Staff have also been using Merck for a very long time and essentially our entire workflows uh, from resource description, LC, OCLC, and other vendors and copy and original cataloging depend on Mark. And it's been 15 years. I can't believe 2002 was 15 years ago. It's been 15 years since Roy Tennant wrote Mark Must Die. But we now find ourselves in a position where non mark data alternatives do exist. They're not mythical. They're out there. <laughs> So, I mean, let's assume that either approach with the Castellini Share VDE project or in-house processes allow us to fully convert our data. We're pretty much there already. Uh, establish updates, work through copy and original cataloging workflows. This is all coming. We ha now have a more general infrastructure challenge. University of Alberta libraries in particular have a lot invested in our current ILS and support mechanisms. I think this is probably common. Uh, while we utilize Blacklight, which is, we have control of its development, Significant work is still being put into its development for current systems. Uh, a shift for development to work with BibFrame2 data would be major. And our dat MARC data does not represent our entire collection. These all need to be incorporated, of course. And there's challenges with doing that with conventional systems, so. So the University of Alberta libraries and other libraries will need to develop clear strategic direction across units to tackle some of these issues. Even so, our experience from the Canadian Linked Data Initiative has highlighted that there are limited resources in any given institution for working towards implementation, and central planning for large-scale projects across institutions is challenging. Getting sort of IT support for a group of large research libraries to sort of coordinate together can be a little tricky, a bit of a balancing act. So with this in mind, we do kind of really wonder if we could use an ally to bring about critical mass for change, maybe something like the Castellini Share VDE project. We're still analyzing it, but. And thinking further about possible workflows, uh, in house, we can continue refining the balance of MARC versus bid frame enrichment, automate our processes to finish our full collection, establish a process for ongoing updates, get our data into a triple store, and we're sort of experimenting with this already. Um, set up some kind of discovery on top, whether working with Blacklight, uh, Jupiter, another system that's local to us, maybe something else. With, kind of, with Castellini Share VDE, at the same time, we could continue working with uh, developing phase three use cases, get our full collection set up with updates, set up original cataloging workflows, copy of cataloging workflows. Uh, discovery is already in, in place, at least as a proof of concept. Uh, the production environment would seem like it would be the next logical step. So even if only for short or medium term use, this would give us a lot of breathing room for infrastructure change and learning through process improvement. Either way, we're going to need a lot more coffee. But it's going to be very exciting. Um, and just like RDA, just like Mark, 
BitFrame will not be forever, at least no single instance of it. It will continue to develop and improve with time. And at some point, we need to dive in and start working with it. Many thanks. So thank you, Ian, for your talk. Uh, do you have uh, any questions from the audience or comments? <laughs> well, I, I have a question from uh, because it's uh, this time of the year and uh, uh, it's almost too late, but you can still write to Santa Claus. So what would you wish from Santa <laughs> Claus uh, related to BibFrame? What would I wish for Santa Claus with related? Ah, hmm. Santa Claus Castellini. I would really love it if they published their vocabulary URI, their URI vocabulary. Uh, the, the Castellini. Yes. Because it, <laughs> so far the data we've gotten back for them is about 300 gigabytes worth. Okay. And reverse engineering that is uh, hard on the eyes. So if they were to publish their vocabulary, which they haven't said they're not going to, but it would be great. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's a few weeks uh, until okay. Christmas, so maybe we will get yeah. present. Okay, any other questions? Uh, okay. Ian, um, so some of the evaluation that you've done, is that, does that sit somewhere besides the slides? So like the side-by-side the -side comparison stuff? I think it's, as more converters become available, I mean, one of the jokes is that if you haven't converted Mark to RDF, the, Whatever, there's a joke there. Um, <laughs> uh, so just knowing knowing the strengths and weaknesses of each converter, where as they stand, and I realize it's a moving target, um, it would be really useful to see see that. Yeah, we've got spreadsheets of comparisons. So there is that. We'd like to put some of our analysis into a paper, whether or not it'll get published. But um, also, I mean, this isn't the end of our comparisons yeah. in any way, shape, or form. I and mean, we haven't even got all our data back. Yeah. Um, so one of the next logical steps that once we get there's two versions of the data back from Castellini, one with their sort of native uh, minted URI structure, one that's meant to be autonomous for the institutions using it, mm -hmm. that have the, the URI broken out more yeah, yeah. definitively. So when we get that back, we want to get it into our triple store and do a little bit more comprehensive analysis of Sparkle okay. uh, as well. So whatever we do, we'll make it available cool. in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah. OK. Anyone else? No. Okay, uh, we're moving to the coffee break, but just remember to sign up for the lightning talks. So we have good talks. <laughs>